Hello everyone, welcome to Groups Master. This is APPSC Group 1 Mains 2023 Science and Technology Question Paper Discussion Series Part 2. This is our official website. Please visit this website for further information and updates. The second question, already previous video, first question discussed in the second question choose science and technology. Digital platforms dramatically improve the quality and accountability of public services and facilitate citizen centric governance. Elaborate and adhere. Allagay in the link question code adhere. Explain various technical, economic, and social bottlenecks in the implementation of e governance programs in India. It is 10 marks. So, in the Indulani Chala points mentioned Jadan Jarigindi. Mir in the Anni points are IELTS now. So, in the country just 10 marks. Kadigar only two questions on Nakanka. Each question mostly 5 plus 5. इच्छा आवका सुनना दी, सो अंधे को इन लोग में काउंस एंड पॉइंट्स मेंशन जैसे सर पता दी, शो शॉर्ट चेस कोने मेरो आह एप्रेन ये लान टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन सोचना पड़ो आंसर चेच। फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल इंट्रोड्यूस इन दिस वे डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स हैव इंडीड प्लेड ए ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव रोल इन इम्प्रूविंग द Accessibility and convenience. Digital platforms have made public services more accessible and convenient for citizens. How? Through online portals, mobile applications and digital interfaces, citizens now can access their services anytime and anywhere, reducing the need for physical visits to government offices. This convenience enhances the overall quality of public service delivery. This is the first point. Next, on efficient service delivery. Digital platforms streamline and automate the various government processes resulting in improved efficiency in service delivery. Through online systems, citizens can apply for services, submit their documents and even they can track their progress and receive notifications electronically. This reduces bureaucracy and eliminates paperwork and minimizes delays and ensuring faster and more efficient service provision. It is the second point. Next third point, then my last one on the dimension transparency and accountability. Digital platforms promote transparency and accountability in public service delivery. How online platforms allow citizens to access information about government programs and policies and expenditure. Now through online platforms, citizens already know about government programs and policies and expenditures, and they know how to get these services this transparency enables citizens to hold public officials accountable and helps in reducing corruption and malpractices next dimension is on real-time monitoring and feedback digital platforms enable real-time monitoring of public services the government agencies can use data analytics and dashboards to monitor service performance citizens can also provide feedback and report issues through online digital platforms and ensuring prompt action and resolution. Next dimension is on enhanced citizen engagement. It is all about citizen participation. Digital platforms facilitate greater citizen engagement in governance processes. First of all, the citizens can participate in online consultations, surveys and feedback mechanisms and allowing them to contribute their opinions, suggestions for policy formulation and implementation. This is all about citizen participation. Next is cost effectiveness. You already know digital platforms offer cost effective solutions for public service delivery. Online systems reduce the need for physical infrastructure and paperwork and manual processes resulting in cost savings for both the government and citizens. Next dimension is on integration of services. Digital platforms facilitate the integration of various government services making it easier for citizens to access multiple services through single interface. Digital platforms have revolutionized the public service delivery by enhancing accessibility, efficiency, transparency, citizen engagement and accountability. Chodandi, keywords are very important. If you have keywords, you can use your answer to create some strength. Create out the by leveraging technology, governments can create citizen-centric governance ecosystems that empower citizens and improve service quality. Next. मान के का टेक्निकल इकोनॉमिकल टेक्निकल इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल बॉटल नेक्स्ट आड़ी गया रो दान आंसर चेस तो ना टेक्निकल इकोनॉमिक बॉटल सोशल बॉटल नेक्स्ट इन द इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ ई गवर्नेंस प्रोग्राम्स फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल टेक्निकल बॉटल नेक्स्ट लैक ऑफ़ एडिक्वेट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सच एस रिलायबल इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी 
of internet and the lack of computers is a technical bottleneck and uneven access to technology and poor network coverage can hinder the effective delivery of digital services also lack of skilled manpower to develop and maintain e-governance systems also affect the e-governance programs in india and also challenges in data sharing and integration can hinder the smooth functioning of e-governance initiatives these are the technical bottlenecks and also the cyber security threats, data breaches and privacy concerns present significant challenges in nowadays from technical point of view and also security and private privacy concerns can also discourage people from using e-governance services. Next economic bottlenecks, the cost of developing and maintaining e-governance systems can be high and also the cost of training people to use e-governance systems can also be high and also the benefits of e-governance may not be immediately apparent which can make it difficult to justify the investment. Next, social bottlenecks. First of all, the lack of awareness about e-governance services among the citizens and also affordability of internet access and digital services can be barrier for citizens, especially those from economically disadvantaged backgrounds. Illiteracy and language barriers can make it difficult for people to use e-governance services. Many citizens, especially in rural and marginalized communities, lack digital literacy and skills required to access and utilize the e-governance services effectively and also resistance to change in traditional mindsets can also hinder the adoption of and acceptance of e-governance initiatives. These are the technical, economic and social bottlenecks. In the second part of the question, answer chair and jarigindi. Next question, second question, lo, B entered here and explain how Atmanirbhar Bharat is bringing a big change in India's IT sector. Suggest the steps to be taken to make it a global hub, technology hub. First of all, Atmanirbhar Bharat and Self-Reliant India. He initiative aim intended to promote self-sufficient and resilience in various sectors, including the IT sector. The Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative. It emphasizes the development and manufacturing of indigenous hardware components, including electronic semiconductors and telecom equipment. This push for local manufacturing reduces dependence on imports, creates employment opportunities and strengthens the domestic IT industry. First point mentioned in the Next second point this initiative focuses on promoting domestic software development and IT services. It encourages the growth of Indian software companies, startups and entrepreneurs by providing support through policy reforms, incentives and access to capital. This foster innovation enhances competitiveness and contributes to the growth of IT sector. Next dimension intente the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative aims to expand digital connectivity in rural and remote areas, bridge the digital divide and to improve the internet access across the country. This infrastructure development facilitates adoption of digital technologies and enhances the reach of IT services to the public, even in the remotest areas. The Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative emphasizes skill development and capacity building in the IT sector. It focuses on enhancing the quality and relevance of technical education and training programs to meet the industry needs. In the moment, skill development initiatives use chess continue like Skill India and Digital India India's uh, digital India program news shares on Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative in strength of Chasna. How by creating a skilled workforce to support the growth of IT sector. Next, the Atmanirbhar Bharat encourages the establishment and growth of startups and promotes innovation in the IT sector. It offers support through policies like Startup India, tax incentives, incubation facilities, and access to venture capital. These keywords are important. Even ni mention just then, if marks are there, any kind E keywords ni use e, e startup India tax incentives incubation facilities access to venture capital e vedanga e e wheat ni use chess koni government anedi manaki IT sector ki boost up is tundanamata. So you learn terms and pada lakad keywords. This ecosystem fosters entrepreneurial spirit, fosters innovative driven enterprises, contributes to the overall development of the industry. The Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative emphasizes the importance of data localization and also data security. It encourages the storage and processing of sensitive data within India's borders which enhances data security and promotes the growth of local data center infrastructure. This ensures critical data remains within the country and helps protect national security interests. This is a debate on the topic. Next, Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative is also promoting the adoption of cloud-based solutions. Uh, cloud-based solutions in India. This is because cloud-based solutions are more scalable and cost-effective than traditional on-premises solutions.
द आत्मनिर्भर भारत इनिशियेटिव फोकस आन स्ट्रेंथनिंग डोमेस्टिक कंपनी टू कंप्ली कंप्लीट एफेक्टिवली इन द ग्लोबल मार्केट अट्राक्ट फॉरन इनवेस्टमेंट एंड फेसिलिटेट टेक्नोलॉजी कोलाबरेशन दिस एमसेज दिस एमसेज आन ग्लोबल कांपटेटिव कंट्रिब्यूट टू द ग्रोथ आफ् इंडिया सैटी एक्सपोर्ट्स मन की आत्मनिर्भर भारत इनिशिटिव और ईटी सैक्टर में बिग चेज दी विधि कंक्लूड चयु बै इंक्रीजिंग इनवेट प्रमोटिंग डोमेस्टिक मेनेजेंट मैनुफाक्चरिंग अं शिफ्ट टू क्रउड बेस सोल्यूशन आत्मनिर्भर भारत कैन हेल्प टू मेक् इंडिया ग्लोबल लीडर इन दईटी सैक्टर नैक्स्ट सैकंड क्वेश्चन एटी स्टे बी टेकन टू मेक् इंडिया ग्लोबल टेक्नजी हब अना यह विधा फस्ट डेन इनवेस्ट इन रीसर्च अं डेवलपमेंट इंडिया नीड्स टू इनवेस्ट हेवीली इन रीसर्च अं डेवलपमेंट टू डेवलप न्यू टेक्नजी अं सोल्यूशन द गवर्नमेंट कैन प्रोवैड फैनाशियल इनसेव कंपनी दट इनवेस्ट इन आर एंड अंड इट कैन आलो सैटअप रीसर्च पार्क अं इनक्यूबेटर्स टू सपोर्ट आर एंड ऐक्टिवटी विधा स्टेपे मन की इंडिया ने ग्लोबल टेक्नजी हब क्रियु अलगे नैक्स्ट स्ट्रेंथ अंड डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इनवेस्ट इन रोबस्ट अंड हई स्पीड डिजिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंक्लूड इंटरनेट कनेक्टी डाटा सेंटर्स अंड क्लौड कंप्यूटिंग फेसिलिटी दिस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट शुड फोकस आन ब्रिडिंग द अर्बन रूरल डिवैड अंड एंश्यूरी सीमल कनेक्टी अक्रॉस द कंट्री की वर्ड चाल इंपारटे नैक्स्ट फास्टर् स्टार्टअप इको सिस्टम create a conducive environment for startups by simplifying regulations providing tax incentives and offering access to funding and mentorships establish incubation centers accelerators and innovation hubs that support entrepreneurship facilitate knowledge sharing next encourage foreign investment foreign investment ne encourage cheyali so government need to implement policies and reforms that attract foreign investment that is fdi in the technology sector offer incentives ease regulatory procedures and ensure favorable business environment to encourage multinational companies to establish their presence in india and also government need to strengthen ip intellectual property protection enhance intellectual property rights protection mechanism to safeguard innovations and encourage research and development next focus on government need to focus on emerging technologies embrace and invest in emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence blockchain internet of things cyber security data analytics veetil med invest cheste emerging technologies meda adi man india no global technology hub lo hub ga create chestad ani cheptunna foster a supportive ecosystem for this technologies through policy support infrastructure development and talent acquisition next dimension is promote global collaboration india need to promote global collaboration foster collaboration and partnerships with international technology organizations research institutions industry leaders facilitate knowledge sharing and technology transfer and joint projects to level as global expertise and accelerate the india's growth as a global technology hub ee vidhanga ee steps teeskunte we can make india a global technology hub then ee vidhanga simple ga conclude cheyachu india can become a global technology hub if these steps should be implemented holistically with continuous monitoring and evaluation we are concluding this video here thank you thank you for watching this video if you really like this video please subscribe to groups master youtube channel and also share this video with your friends thank you